Hi everyone, Gundam Fox here for 28th and brand new episode of our special edition Lore of the Universal Century. Today, we're going back again to the One Year War era in an attempt to answer a particular question, which is... Yep, in this video, we are going to explore 5 amazing yet extremely obscure variants of the gun tank. When did they appear, how good they were, and extract every bit of mechanical knowledge we have on them so far. But let's start by the beginning, what is exactly the gun tank? Codenamed Eric 75, the gun tank was a prototype long-range support mobile suit and the first battle-ready official mobile weapon deployed by the Earth Federation forces. The first design conceptualized by the V Project, the gun tank was the bridge we've paid away from the Federation tank series to avenge your fully-fledged mobile suits, being the polished and refined form of a prototype Evia armored anti-Zaku machine called the RTX-44 itself successor of the Type 61 main battle tank. This in-between role filled by the gun tank is the reason behind its strange design, which rarely mix tank features to humanoid shapes in the least expected areas. Like a conventional tank, the gun tank's mobility was ensured by two endless track caterpillar threads, enabling the gun tank to roam in hazard terrains with little difficulties but severely limiting its mobility in comparison with regular mobile suit legs. Nonetheless, the gun tank had another asset in its sleeves, a series of rocket thrusters and altitude control veneers which enabled the vehicle to propel itself in the air for a very short amount of time, or be able to weirdly cruising space, albeit with very limited mobility. Another remnant of the gun tank's tank origins were its pair of main weapons, 280mm low recoil cannons with a 260km firing range, and which were recoiled by back-mounted gas canisters. These weapons, called the tank cannon guns, fired explosive bullets and could curve the firing arcs of these projectiles when fired under gravity. As for its mobile suit features, the gun tank made use of a functional mobile suit torso, connected to a pair of humanoid arms, both mounting four choose 40mm missile launchers as ends, in which volleys protected the gun tank in close range and during anti-air combat. Nicknamed BOPS, these armaments could fire either anti-aircraft missiles or shotgun shells, providing extra versatility to the gun tank design. Now, the gun tank was more than just an in-between tank mobile suit hybrid, being fully part of the Federation prestigious V project and as such, introduced some of the most successful features of this top secret development plan. The first of these was the cool block system, which enabled a cool fighter to serve as the gun tank cockpit and escape pod. This versatile feature would enable the pilot of a destroyed gun tank to escape the machine with the collected data on board the little fighter, or either launching the little fighter and they dock during combat into the more capable gun tank. The second special feature was its armor frame, made of Luna Titanium, a top secret material refined by the V Project engineers, and which was the strongest alloy available at that time. This provided the gun tank with state of the art defenses, exceeding any kind of tank but also any existing Zeo mobile suit at that time in the late UC-70s. The result was a versatile long-range support machine, extremely effective for precise tactical bombardment and fire support, and which were extremely well with its other sibling daughter units of the V-Project, aka the Eric 77 Gun Cannon and Eric 78 Gundam. Now, as always, the gun tank was far from being devoid of flaws. First, the tank-type locomotion induced by the caterpillar threads severely hindered the machine's mobility and put it to severe disadvantage against humanoid-legged mobile suits. For the same reason, the gun tank was pretty much restricted to ground combat, and also it could operate in open space, its mobility was even lower than on Earth or colonies, which equaled to terrible mobility and almost no maneuverability. This is showcased very well in the later part of the Mobile Suit Gundam TV series, 
but the poorly agile Zacrello was shown to easily outmaneuver the gun tank in space. In terms of weapons, the gun tank alas suffered from having been completed early on during the V project, and thus had been equipped with a nuclear gas turbine hybrid generator. Although this crude power source was enough to power the whole machine, it was not nearly enough to support beam weapons, something later fixed by the V project through the new thermonuclear reactor using the gun cannon and Gundam alongside the ECAP system. This meant that the gun tank missed the opportunity of being even deadlier, and also future variants fixed the issue, the regular model never upgraded to beam artillery. Last but not least, the gun tank core block system introduced an important design flaw, which was that because of the docking port, the torso wasn't able to swivel, thus forcing the tank mobile suit hybrid to fully rotate its body to change direction or firing angles. This would be fixed after episode 24, where the core block system would be abolished for a slightly swiveling cassette generator, and thanks to the data collected by the learning computer of the core fighter, the original piloting system, requiring a driver and a gunner, would be phased out for a single pilot seat in the canopy style head. Originally, eight or slightly different gun tanks had been produced by the Federation between May and September UC-79, but because of Shaw's intervention in Site 7, only the fourth prototype survived the onslaught, later boarding the white base before retreating to Earth. In the white base ends, this gun tank would prove its worth during the One Year War, playing vital roles during the Battle of Sito, the Battle of Solomon, and in the end, during the Battle of Abawaku, where it met its demise in the last hours of the war. Thanks to the scavenged parts brought by the white base to Earth from Site 7, some of the destroyed prototypes would be restored following the specifications of the Star 4 unit, being introduced on various front lines for additional support. Although the gun tank eventually proved to be a poor mobile suit, it was nonetheless hailed as an excellent support vehicle, which led to the Federation producing an entire line of machines based on the Eric 75. Among these spawns, some are notably well known by the fanbase, such as the gun tank mass production type, massacred by Norris Packard in the 8th mobile suit team, or the gun tank 2, showcased in Zeta Gundam during the second battle of Jaburo, and later Unicorn during the battle of Torrington. For the more cultural people, some other variants can come to mind, in the form of the gun tank local control type from mobile suit variation ridden, or the gun tank grand assault type seen in Mobile Suit Igloo. But what if I told you there was a certain number of gun tank variations so obscure that you never knew about? So obscure that even Japanese sources pretend to forget altogether. Today, we are going to present 5 of these obscure tank mobile suit hybrids you never heard about. And without losing any time, let's get to the topic. Ah, Gundam Aggressor. If you are aware of the existence of this delightful manga, it is probably because of its star mobile suit, the edgy but super popular Red Rider. Now, Gundam Aggressor is a pleasant manga to read, with very interesting characters, but also a small but very cool number of original mecha designs, among which is a certain gun tank variant. Meet the Eric 75 Gun Tank Aggressor version, which actually is only referred as Gun Tank with no fancy additional designation, and we might see why. Based on the writing painted on its caterpillar thread side armor, this Gun Tank is codenamed the Gamma Inferior 05, something we will use as this machine's nickname. The Gamma 5 is actually a sort of bastard version of the regular Gun Tank and the mass production variant, featuring design features taken from both machines. The lower body and caterpillar threads are taken from the mass production gun tank, but lacks the side armor protecting the wheels. The abdomen and chest pieces are an amalgamy of the gun tank and gun tank mass production type counterparts, lacking the core block system, but also the swiveling mechanism that the MP gun tank got at the place of the core block port. The chest is connected to two arms which seems to be taken from the regular gun tank and features the same bubble shoulders and quadruple bob launchers. Now, the head of the Gamma 5 is similar to the regular gun tank canopy style cockpit but also introduced the hand antennas of the mass production variant. Last but not least, 
our subject of study introduces the same auto-reloading backpack fitted by the mass production gun tank, with the 120mm cannons being placed on this backpack instead of being fused with the chest like seen in the regular gun tank but also the mass production version. And that's it! The Gamma 5 is only presented as this weird confusing design and a standalone machine stored in the bowels of the Jebru HQ of the Earth Federation forces. Now, there might be more to the Gamma 5 that one could think about in the first place. Considering the location of this unit, coupled with its hybrid features, it would be very reasonable to consider that the Gamma 5 is somehow linked to the development of the mass production variant and served as the missing link between Gun Tank and Gun Tank MP. Perhaps the Gamma 5 is a refined prototype from which the MP version would be directly based upon. Perhaps it is merely a machine made with a Scarecrow Gun Tank chassis which tested features later included in the mass production type. The mystery remains unsolved. About this machine deployment history, it remained undisturbed in the death of Jaburo for most of the war, until Sergeant Heinz Highway of the Aggressor Unit decided to board it to participate in the infamous Battle of Jaburo. There, the gun tank would encounter Captain Maximilian and his custom Zogok, and engage the damaged Zion Ace and Femus mobile suit. The Gamma 5 would block the trump card of the Zogok, a large explosive field boomerang, with the boomerang remaining stuck in the hands of the gun tank. Knowing himself condemned, Iwei would charge at the Zogok, pushing both machines in the Amazonian river before the boomerang detonation finished them both. And that's all we have about this mysterious prototype, which sacrificed itself to take a Zion Ace to the grave. No time to spare, let's move to our next entry. Most of the time, rushed out machines created as a stopgap measure to fill the ranks of an army never live past the condition of rushed out machines. I mean, things like the Ball or the Ogo would pretty much have to agree with me seeing how they get deployed in mass only to be slaughtered when the opposing side start deploying high-end machines. Well, sometimes rushed out machines do achieve surprisingly good results, in this case, even when the rushed out machine is something belonging to the usually cursed Gunton class. Meet the RX 75M Gunton Snakeman, a Gunton variant drawing its nickname from its cobra like silhouette, but also the cute cobra motif painted on it. Labeled as a tank hunter and coastal defense interceptor, whatever these terms are supposed to mean, the Snakeman was developed during the early days of the Odessa campaign being manufactured in a hurry in some recaptured facilities in France. In terms of core design, the Snake Man does feel like a rushed out and lower tech version of the Gun Tank, be it when it comes to its features, but also main armaments. Size-wise, the Snake Man is much smaller than the Gun Tank, towering at less than 10 meters of height against the 15 meters of the Gun Tank. The drawing system is made of a single cockpit located in the chest without any co-fighter docking ports being included in the design. Surprisingly, the head camera is very different from the canopy style used by most of the gun tank series and seems to have been made using a left torre head from a gun cannon type, something strengthened by the fact this head makes use of a television sensor only used by the gym and the gun cannon. This special head can be extended to roughly 20 meters of height as a sort of periscope and be used as a relay antenna for longer detection ranges. Weaponry-wise, the Snake Man introduced two 120mm main cannons, but phase out the movable arms and bob cannons for much simpler armaments. On both sides, the Snake Man instead introduces a new kind of blockish section, which couples a homing missile launcher with an ammunition capacity of 5 missiles each, with a radio altimeter paired with a rather common receiver. On the side of these blocks, a A-tube spray missile launcher can be mounted for extra firepower, an equipment also shared by the regular gun cannon. Finally, six monotube vertical missile launchers are mounted in the back, being located behind the main cannons. Now, I introduce the Snake Man as being this very successful machine, and we'll now see how, based on its deployment history. In early November UC-79, a submarine fleet of Zion Earth Attack Force attempted to blockade the Straits of Gibraltar, 
by launching a preventive strike against the Federation assets on each side of the strait. The intel, however, was cracked down by the Federation Military Intelligence Department, which led to the entire operation being leaked to the Federation forces. Because of this, the Zion Submarine Division sent to attack the Morocco's Tangier base was welcomed by two newly transferred Snakeman gun tanks, which quickly moved to intercept the enemy. After that, the fully prepared gun tanks were able to make quick work of the assaulters, destroying the Jukon class mother ship before it could deploy any ground mobile suits, and then taking care of a Zogok and three other Gogs. Despite the casualties, the Zion forces were almost able to reach the main casemates of the base, but were eventually wiped out by the combined efforts of the Snakemans and other supporting missile launchers auto cars. Not bad for a gun tank, Snakeman. Too bad you were too obscure to be loved by the fan base. Wanna hear the story of an even more successful gun tank? One that defeated the ancestor of one of the most stupid and coolest mobile armors of the franchise? Well, request granted, let's meet this obscure figure you already heard about in a past video. I'm calling the Eryx 176C AK Gun Tank Belt Drive. A mysterious mech introduced in the messy works of Makoto Kobayashi, the belt drive was a new kind of gun tank variation, with general shapes reminiscing of both the local type gun tank and the local control type gun tank. Weaponry wise, the belt drive abandoned traditional 120mm cannons for a new kind of equipment, a small pair of short barrel weapons connected to large side exhaust vents. These cannons are said to belong to a class of mortar type weapons, but some other sources instead theorize these cannons to be experimental beam cannons. Aside this intriguing weaponry, the belt drive does retain the traditional bop and launchers, upgrading the four barrels weapons for a five barrels variant. The arms of the belt drive are also far more armored than regular gun tanks arms, with the ball joint providing the arms movement being protected by curved armor plating, something unusual for any kind of gun tank. Now, yeah, that's all we have technically about the belt drive with the real interest of this rather forgettable machine coming from its deployment history. In November UC-79, the belt drive, alongside another mysterious prototype called the Gun Cannon Tulex type, were deployed as part of the 23rd Ground Division of the Earth Federation Ground Forces on the Russian front, and engaged Zion's 4th Army, which was trying to break the 6th Army from encirclement. There, the duo of unusual Federation machines were welcomed by an even weirder opponent, a duo of land combat types mobile armors, the earliest ancestors of the Bound Dock. Despite the enemy terrifying firepower, the belt drive and the Tulex type were able to tank the enemy assault. And yeah, that's all we have about the belt drive. Let's move to a more consistent variant. If you are part of the more cultured audience, you are perhaps familiar with the gun tank fully fledged successor, the spawn that returned to its main battle tank roots, namely the famous RMV-01 Gun Tank 2. The Gun Tank 2 is this backward evolution to the Gun Tank, a model that entered production in the final stages of the One Year War and slightly afterwards, before being discontinued due to how inadequate it was with the modern rules of mobile suit warfare. That being said, the Gun Tank 2 may be a mobile suit variation great design, it isn't that much obscure, unlike one of its own spawns we are going to cover right now. Meet the RMV-03 Gun Tank 3, a heavily armored attack use mobile vehicle and a Gun Tank variant serving as the direct successor to our beloved Gun Tank 2. Introduced in the gamebook Mobile Suit Gundam Burning Pursuit, the Gun Tank 3 is presented as a strengthened and improved version of its predecessor, specially designed to act as a frontline breaker on the African's One Year War Gravity Front. To achieve this role, the Gun Tank of course introduces a completely renewed arsenal, as fitting for any new incarnation of the Gun Tank lineage. Its right hand is removed in favor of a new beam artillery asset, a twin barrel EV beam cannon said to have twice the output of a regular beam rifle. The left side instead mounts a fully functional mobile suit arm with a three fingered end enabling the gun tank to crudely manipulate objects but also to bash enemy mobile suits in a similar fashion 
to the on iron nails used by the amphibious assets. The air intakes, traditionally placed in the chest, have been moved to the lower body, near the caterpillar threads, with their original location having been instead filled by a pair of three barrel machine cannons for additional firepower. The head has been encased in the chest, offering better protection for the cockpit and thus the driver's seat. Next to it, a launcher speculated to be a triple smoke discharger is also mounted, although the details about this weapon are scarce, with some sources implying it to be a regular missile launcher instead. About its deployment history, the Gunton 3 would be deployed to Africa as a prototype and ends up engaging John Quest, a maintenance child soldier belonging to the Zion's Earth Attack Force. Quest would afterwards prove to be one of the few survivors of a friendly fire attack perpetrated by the Aryan Scorpions, a Zion Special Force team that had betrayed the rest of the Zion soldiers in Tanzania to safe keep crucial information from falling into federal hands, as well as saving their own skins by dealing with the enemy. Unfortunately, the Gunton 3 wouldn't be produced in any kind of additional production, probably because the Gunton 2 was deemed good enough to fill the ranks. And with the Gunton 3 covered, let's move to our last variant. Time to present our last candidate, my favorite one out of the list, and probably, well, the goofiest. Introducing the RMV-05, the Guntunk's variant nicknamed Guntunk Hoover. A modified version of the One Year War Guntunk, the Guntunk Hoover was yet another entry to the direct official Guntunk lineage, succeeding the Guntunk 2 and 3 as the potential Guntunk 4. Unlike the more experimental Guntunk 3, the Guntunk Hoover was brought back to more conventional Guntunk shapes, yet made use of innovative aesthetics and assets that separated it from anything designed before it. Like its name showcase, the Gunzong Hover abandoned the traditional endless track caterpillar threads which serve as the Gunzong series' main mean of locomotion, instead relying on a hovering duck system, enabling it to move by floating slightly above the ground. Unlike the thermonuclear jet engine used by both the Dome and the Big Three class, this hovering dock not only greatly improved the maneuverability of the gun tank hover, but also made it far less susceptible to terrain's effects. Its arsenal was also completely renewed in comparison to any of its predecessors, boosting a far more complete and effective degree of firepower. As primary weapons, the gun tank hover abandoned the back-mounted physical base cannons, introducing instead a pair of large-caliber high-output beam cannons with rather organic-like barrels. These weapons were supported by the Gunzong secondary weapons, a set of triple tube rocket launchers mounted in the appendices serving as the Gunzong Hoover's arms and ends. Aside these, the Gunzong Hoover also mounted a pair of chest beam cannons located just under the chest air intakes. Now, the most interesting design feature of the Guntung Hoover was its rather unusual and unique looking head, which seems to mix Zion and Federation's assets alike. The head cockpit indeed takes the form of the traditional canopy style cockpit used since the original Guntung, but also mounts a Zion style mono eye camera just underneath it as a sort of secondary sensor. This ties with the Guntung's over period of development, with the suit being said to have been developed after the One Year War, yet considered old style by early UC-87. Considering suits from UC-84 and onward were considered aging but viable by Griff's era standard, this would mean the Guntung Hover was likely one of these suits developed between UC-80 and UC-83, and one of the earliest crude mix between Federal and Zion capture technologies. Deployment-wise, not much is known about the Gundam Hover, aside that it appeared in the gamebook Mobile Suit Gundam 87, Jared Sorty Order. In this janky prequel that fleshed out Jared's backstory before Zeta Gundam, a Gundam Hover would be stationed in the Parkland base located in the Sewell Peninsula in Alaska and would be hijacked by an anti-federal organization who had taken control of the military facility. Since Barkloon was of primordial importance to the Titans, serving as a solar energy transceiver facility for the tactical satellite Kerberos, Jared would be sent on a secret infiltration mission, 
with the goal being to destroy the different wave catchers to deny the terrorists access to the Kerberos firepower. The diverted gun tank would then confront Jerry Donnie's Isaac upon landing, but the young Titans cadets would ultimately prevail, destroying the gun tank hover and the rest of the enemy units one by one, eventually succeeding in his mission to destroy the wave catchers. And with the gun tank hover and the official development line of the gun tank series, serving as the final extension of the Eric 75 and RMV lines, last remnants of the Federation earliest mobile suit design. But who will survive?